Well, hello everyone, Tristan Fenholt here. I wanna to talk to you today about trials. <laughs> yes, trials. This is gonna be an encouraging word, I believe, uh, for us today. But I don't talk about trials. Call them whatever you want. We all have different words for them, whether we call them trials or challenges, problems, hardship, tribulation. You know, uh, we have any number of words to describe them, but all of us go through trials. But did you know that the Lord wants you and I to have the proper perspective whenever it is that you and I are going through trials? And when we have the proper perspective, did you know that our outcome will be different? A proper perspective will uh, really produce a better outcome. But if we have the wrong perspective, then we're going to have a uh, worse outcome. Trials are something that we all face and the Lord wants us to have the right perspective. I want to pick it up in Romans chapter number five and I want to read the first five verses. So Romans five verses one through five. Um, I'm going to hone in on chap on verse number three, but I just want to show you the whole context so you can see where it uh, sits. It says in Romans five, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint. So I just read a very short passage, five verses from Romans chapter number five, but I want to hone in on verse number three. Listen to it again. But we also glory in tribulations. Notice, we also glory in tribulations. Now, this is the perspective that God wants us to have, that we glory in tribulations. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever it is that I face tribulation <laughs> or trials and hardship, I do not consider it something glorious, <laughs> right? I don't consider it something to celebrate. But yet the Bible says this is the proper perspective. We glory in tribulation. James 1, 2 says this, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Count it all joy. Now, I don't know about you, that sounds so counterintuitive. That seems to go against our default nature, doesn't it? Whenever it is that I find myself going through a trial, <laughs> my default nature is not to consider it something to celebrate <laughs> and to consider it something joyful. No, I consider it something that's more of a pain, a nuisance, um, maybe uh, creating uh, discouragement or pressure or stress. Like, this is stressful. This isn't joyful at all. But I'm talking to you about the proper perspective. This is the perspective the Lord wants us to have when we face various trials. In fact, Jesus said in John 16, 33, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. <laughs> but be of good cheer. He's acknowledging that we are going to face tribulation in the world, but be of good cheer. He's telling us to have a different perspective when it is that we face trials. Well, that alone is challenging. How is it that you and I can be joyful in trials? And how is it that we can count it all joy and be of good cheer when we are facing hardship? Well, listen to what the Bible goes on to say. We glory in tribulations knowing that. Notice, we glory in tribulations knowing that. In other words, we have to know something. You see, there is something that is happening to us whenever it is that we're facing trials. And we can count it all joy knowing something. See, we have to know something. See, without the proper perspective, we're not going to have the right uh, demeanor or the right, you know, really uh, approach to the trial. We need to know something. Listen to it again. Not only that, but we also glory in tribulations knowing that. Well, knowing what? Knowing that, listen to this, tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance 
produces character and character produces hope. Listen to it again. We need to have the right perspective whenever it is we're facing trials. We can glory in trials and have joy in trials and be of good cheer in trials knowing that the trials are doing something to us. They are producing perseverance. Now that word perseverance means endurance. Whenever it is that we're facing trials, it's going to test our endurance. Now let me just stop there for a second. Endurance. Um, whenever it is that we are facing an obstacle, it's going to challenge our endurance. I want you to think about an Olympic athlete, maybe a gold medalist, maybe it's an Olympic runner. Okay. Um, when an Olympic runner is training, or maybe they're even very young before they're officially training and they might like running. Well, like all of us, I'm sure that they got fatigued at some point running. <laughs> you know, it doesn't take very long for me. You know, I live in the hills here and sometimes if I'm, you know, even jogging or even walking up a hill, I can get winded. I start to feel a little stomach cramp or a leg cramp or a muscle something, right? I can get lightheaded even and just realize, whoa, I'm, I'm pushing myself a little, little too much going up this hill, jogging a little too much. Now, no doubt an Olympic athlete would feel the same thing. But what do they do? They press on. They persevere. See, what they're doing as they continue to persevere is they're building up their endurance so that they can go farther, that they can be stronger. They have a bigger capacity. Are you guys seeing this? And so when they reach their limit and they realize, okay, boy, I, I gave it all I got today. They get up the next day or whenever it is that they, they get up again and they want to push it even further, go a little further. Why? To build their endurance to where when they are running a marathon or they're doing their Olympic, whatever it is, their sport that they're doing, they're able to get a gold. Why? Because they pushed through the endurance and it built up their endurance. This happens even with weightlifting. Uh, let's just say, you know, you're starting out weightlifting and so you grab 10 pound and you're doing 10 pound arm curls, right? And you can feel that resistance. And sometimes people just don't like the resistance. I don't like the way it feels. My arm's burning. <laughs> you know, and they just put it down and just think, ah, that's too much. Or someone can stick with it. Maybe they can only do 10 at 10 pounds, right? And then they put it down. But as they continue to do it, their muscle builds greater capacity and now they are able to increase the weight to maybe 20 pounds. And oh, they're feeling it again. They're feeling it again. Oh, and they can either give up and say, it's not worth it. I don't like the pain. Or they build up their endurance to where now they can do 30 pounds, 40 pounds, 50 pounds. Same thing happens when you're, you're benching weights as well. You increase your capacity, but it's challenging your endurance. If we continue to press through, here's what the Bible is saying. It's creating endurance. In other words, we're going to get further in life when we allow or when we have the proper perspective that when we face various trials, we're going to get further in life when we push through the trials with endurance and we let it build our endurance. Think about when David was uh, King David, when he was a young boy in his father Jesse's house taking care of the sheep. When he was faced with a giant, Goliath, he made an interesting comment. He said something like, you know, the Lord saved me from the lion and the bear, and what is this uncircumcised Philistine? In other words, the, the, the challenges got bigger, but here's what he's saying. From a lion, I, I was able to take down a lion, and then it was a bear, and he was able to take down a bear, and now it's Goliath. Now he's like, what was, what was happening? His endurance was getting built because he overcame this trial, then a bigger trial, and then Goliath. And then after Goliath, oh my goodness, sometimes we think, oh, that was the end of, of his battles and trials. No, no, no. He, the king ended up after him, right? King Saul built up his endurance, built up his endurance. And then his own son, when David was the king, there was treason and insurrection within his own house and a trial there, and he overcame that one. Here's my point. Count it all joy when we fall into various trials. Why? Because the trial is producing perseverance. But we have a choice. We can either 
have the wrong perspective and say, it's not worth it, it's too hard, I can't do it, and we give up. And if we give up, then it didn't produce perseverance. We gave up, we quit, and therefore we will not be better off. We will not be better off. The trial won. Or we can press through in faith. Now, I'm not saying we just press through without faith and just, well, I'm just going to press through. I'm going to keep on keeping on. I'm not talking like that. I'm talking about perseverance and faith, endurance in faith. We persevere in faith. And as we persevere in faith, it is building our endurance. Something else happens while we're pressing through. Listen to what it says again, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance or endurance and perseverance produces character. Something else is being improved in our life and it is our character. You see, when we press through, it's refining our character. I don't know about you, but whenever I find myself in various trials, there are certain character traits that come up in me that I don't like to see. (laughs) trials have a way of causing us to be more irritable or angry or short-fused, right? Easily annoyed, whatever it could be. Or maybe, you know, we just start slumping and we get discouraged and we get to, we get mopey. And there's certain things within our character that comes up, but we count it all joy. Why? Because through the trial, it can also refine our character. See, count it all joy when those negative character traits come up when you're in a trial, count it all joy and say, boy, I'm going to see that, recognize that character trait. I need to work on that. And so I'm going to work on the anger. I'm going to work on being short-fused. I'm going to work on being easily annoyed or whatever those things are. It'll work on your character. You know what else it'll do? It'll refine your character to trust more, forgive more. Isn't that right? Because it's testing you. Maybe the problem you're facing is a hurt from somebody. And it's testing your perseverance. You just want to quit and give up because somebody injured you. And so maybe you just can't move on in the ministry or move on at work or move on with your family or marriage because somebody injured you or it's producing your character when you forgive, when you release, right? And you choose to walk in love. It's producing your character. And notice what it goes on to say, and character produces hope. In other words, the Lord does not want us to lose hope whenever it is that we're going through trials. You see, when we're going through trials, the Bible tells us three things are being tested. Our perseverance, our character, and our hope. And when they're being tested simultaneously, it can be improving in all three of those areas. It can be improving our perseverance, it can be improving our character, and it can be improving on our hope. That is the right perspective. What is the right perspective? We glory in tribulations knowing that it actually produces. You know what I can exchange with the word produces? Improves on. That tribulation improves our perseverance. And perseverance improves our character, and character improves on our hope. Here's the proper perspective we're going through trials. It can actually improve on our lives. That is not how we're by default wired to think. When our natural tendency when we face trials is to think it is going to destroy our life, break down our life, and that's really what the trial is designed by the enemy to do. The enemy wants the trial and has designed the trial to break you down, to cause you to quit. But the Lord says, don't let the trial win. The Lord is saying, when you have the proper perspective, take what the enemy is meaning for evil and turn it around for good. Instead of letting it challenge and defeat your endurance, let it produce more endurance rather than it causing your character to to be broken down, cause it to build up your character. And rather than losing hope, let it build up your hope. Hang on to your hope. Hang on to your hope. You see, we have to have the proper perspective. James 1, 2, I quoted it earlier, but let me um, uh, quote it a little further. Count it all joy when we fall into various trials, knowing that it's the same two words that we read in Romans chapter five, 
Count it all joy knowing something. Knowing what? James goes on to say, the testing of our faith produces patience or endurance. And let patience have its perfect work that you may be complete, lacking nothing. In other words, the proper perspective is trials, though many trials, they're not caused by God. Don't hear me saying that God causes all these to improve on our character. No, no, no. The enemy causes trials. We live in a fallen world. Trials will come our way. But God can use all the trials, no matter where they come from, to improve on our endurance, improve our character, and improve our hope. And we can be better off on the other side of a trial than we were before we even entered the trial. And we can count it all joy. Go through whatever you're going through in faith, not defeat. You are the head and not the tail. You are above only and not beneath. The Lord says He will always lead you in triumph. Isn't that right? Thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph. The Bible says, uh, He Himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can boldly say, uh, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. You have no reason to fear. The Lord is with you. He will lead you in triumph. We need to have the right perspective. That is this. This trial is actually going to improve on my life. Let me close with this real quick. If you study any number of wealthy entrepreneurs, maybe people who started a small startup company to where now they're millionaires or billionaires, you know, and of course now Amazon is a over a trillion dollar net uh, worth company, uh, not net worth company, but uh, valued over a trillion dollars. Study, study these people out in these large companies, these, the wealthiest companies and the wealthiest people on earth. And you know what you'll find, a common thread through all of them? They all faced incredible obstacles. Some of them faced bankruptcies, lawsuits. Some of them their fault, some of them not their fault. But either way, they overcame, they uh, uh, worked those problems through, and they began to still build. They picked themselves up and they continued to build. And the Lord says that because we have Him, we can count it all joy when we fall into various trials. Why? Knowing that the trials are actually improving on our endurance, improving on our character, and improving on our hope. Don't let it destroy your character. Don't let it destroy your endurance. And don't let it destroy your hope. Do not lose hope. If we're losing hope, it's a sign we're losing the proper perspective. With the proper perspective, we have hope. And so we go through it in faith and we're better off on the other side. So I want to encourage you, whatever it is you're facing today, have the proper perspective, knowing that God can actually use this trial to improve on your character, improve on your endurance, improve on your hope, improve on your life, and you'll go to greater levels. And yes, there'll be greater challenges, but you'll get further down the road when you press through in faith because God is building you up in spite of the problems in spite of the trials. God is good. I love you. Thank you for watching today. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these videos. And if you'd like to start a house church, either with The Rock, a four square church, or with Solid Lives, our global discipleship and church planning ministry, go to one of those websites. Go to therock.com for The Rock or solidlives.com for Solid Lives. Click on House Churches and fill out the interest form. We'd love to partner with you to advance the kingdom of God.